is finally bringing my baby home. Early this morning, I received a very exciting phone call from Christine. She told me about her times at the burn unit at New York General Hospital. She also told me that she missed me too much to say one last minute. Her first plane had been canceled due to technical difficulties, but that they replaced it with Flight 93 instead. My heart left with joy at the thought of her return home. We planned to stay up all night long talking about her wonderful trip. I just want to see her beautiful face again, to hug her and rejoice in her being home. Danny was coming over so he could greet his daughter as soon as she walked through the door. Christine had always asked why Danny and I divorced. She always thought it was his idea to leave me. What she doesn't know is that we still love each other very much. Which dear when she arrives, we are going to announce the news of our reconciliation. I just want Christine home. Every passing minute seemed like an eternity to my yearning heart. There was something I knew, absolutely sure, that I would tell her as soon as she walked through that door. I could hear my heart whisper the words, I love you, Christine. Christine, September, September 11th, 2001, 8.30 a.m. Talking to my mom felt so good after such a long time apart. I missed her so much. I felt like a little girl inside that yearned to see her mom again. Ma'am, may I take your bags? I didn't even realize that I was still holding on to my bags as I sat down in my chair. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, please take them. The attendant gave me a sweet smile. She put my bags in the upper storage area. I just love when people do things for you and are not angry about it. Flight 93 will take off in five minutes. Please take your seats and respect the seatbelt sign. I slowly inhale a deep breath and I bow my head to pray. Please, God, help this plane go home safely and watch over us as we take the long journey back to where we belong. In Jesus' name, amen. When the plane rumbles to life, I lay my head back and close my eyes. Mommy, Mommy, look what I made. Oh my gosh, honey, is that an angel? Yes, Mommy, it's my guardian angel. An angel that will always watch over me. You know what? I have a perfect name for this angel of yours. What is that, Mommy? Tell me, please. Christine. A sudden scream wakes me up from a soundless sleep. My eyes burst open with sudden fright as I see what is happening in front of me. Oh, Jesus, please, no. One man is holding a knife up to the attendant who was so sweet to me about my bags. The other has a bomb strapped around his waist. I can't understand what they are saying, but they are yelling so angrily that I can almost identify what they are trying to speak. I slowly try to creep over to the lady across from me. What is going on? I notice that I can hardly speak and my voice rustles with held back tears. I can tell that the lady is as afraid as I am. Two, two planes have hit both the Twin Towers in New York and four hijackers have just taken over our plane. My heart falls to my knees. The wonderful place that I have just visited has been destroyed by something awful that is unfolding. I hug the woman and tell her it is all right. She tries to mumble something, but she is so hysterical that I can hardly identify what she is trying to say. Get back. I notice one of the men coming toward me with a knife. I look down and see the intended dead. I stagger fast back to my seat. Oh God, please watch over all these people. I realize what I have to do now. I pick up the airline phone with shaky hands and I dial my mom's number. I slowly count the rings to her record a big up. Hello, you have reached Christine and J.S. James. Please leave a message after the God bless you. My tears are constricting my throat to where I can hardly speak. I have to get this message to my mother. If I don't, then I will die trying. Mom, it's Christine. Um, I just want to say I love you so much. A sudden sob rips through my whole body, but I still go on with what I have to say. Please don't be angry with these hijackers. You know who you are, and God wants you to forgive. I love you more than anything. I will cherish all the memories we have had together, and I am reassured that this plane will land, and I will be in your arms again. I slowly hang up the phone and my body shakes with horrible cries of screaming sobs. I don't 
should be saying that though. God has given me the greatest life I could ever dream of. I've loved every minute of it and I will love him no matter what happens. My daughter, I love you. Do what is in your heart now. I will lead you wherever your heart may go. Sureness fills my soul. I sneak over to the woman across from me and, get, and ask her what they plan to do. They're going to hit the White House. That was the only thing I needed to hear before I stood up and shouted, Is there a pilot on this plane? Sit down now. The screams are hurting my ears, but I can't stop now. Yes, I used to be a pilot a long time ago. I run to the bearded man at the back and tell him my plan. His eyes widen with every word. When I finish, his eyes go from wide to determined. We start going to every person on the plane telling them our plan, with the hijackers still yelling and threatening us. When our plan is finally complete, I go back to my seat and pray that it works. One, two, three. A man from the back runs toward the front and starts attacking the man with the knife. I jump up a few seconds later and run to the front myself. I fight with all I have in me. More and more people start running to the front. The bombs are fake. They're dead. Come on, let's get the drink card. We all run to the back and retrieve the card. We all grab hold and run with all we have in us. The cart bashes the convict door with a loud bang. We don't give up. We keep pushing and pushing until the door finally gives away. A dark man with a black bandana around his head charges at us, but we fight it back. The bearded man tries his best to take the cares away from the other angered hijacker. I hear screams all around me. Suddenly, the plane jerks so hard that it throws me backward into second class. I try my best to get up. I can't pull up. The plane lunges forward. I hold on to one of the chairs with numb fingers. It dawns on me what is about to happen. I don't want to fight for my life anymore. And instead of being sad, I thank God that I saved more lives than my own. I suddenly hear a loud, ear deafening crash, and everything goes black. Come, my child. It is time for you to come home. My body wants to stay. But my soul carries me to the light that will take me peacefully home. Janice, 9 a.m. While Danny watches the news, I get a chance to put up the welcome home sign for Christine. I smiled at the thought of her face turning red from embarrassment. Janice, I think you, you should come in here. As I slowly walked into the living room, my eyes lock onto the images unfolding on the television. What I'm seeing is like a hell on earth. The Twin Towers in New York City were ablaze with fire. Danny takes my hand and kissed it. Honey, it will be okay, he whispered. I was just so terrified, but yet so glad that Christine wasn't stuck in the middle of this awful mess. I think I'm going to make some tea. While walking back into the kitchen, I pray a silent prayer for all the families that most definitely have lost loved ones in the horrific tragedy that will change our world forever. Suddenly, the voice of our reporter brought me running back in the living room. It seems that there has been yet another plane crash near Somerset County, Pennsylvania. We have no information on any victims that have perished in this crash. Danny was as pale as I was. Something on the screen caught my eye in a split second. The headline was the only thing that brought me hope. It has been confirmed that Flight 92 is the airline plane that crashed near the county of Somerset. Oh, thank you, God. I dropped to my knees and I started crying. My baby was going to be all right. Christine was coming home. Janice, 10.30 a.m. At every passing minute, I become afraid and worried. Christine should have landed by now. At least I knew she was okay. 